I was going through updating some stuff, uh, getting ready to re-implement the mathematics.dimensions package since I know, wow, I messed up last time. And uh, if you haven't noticed, I was originally doing my stuff through Fossil, and it's now through Git. Uh, the change was not because I was not happy with Fossil. In fact, I still absolutely uh, prefer Fossil. And my experiences with Git are making me prefer Fossil even more because just minor shit like this annoys the hell out of me. I checked Git status earlier. Uh, normally Fossil uh, will just, when you, when you, uh, commit the changes, we'll just go through all of the files in its list of the repository and go, hey, this one's changed, let's update this. This one's changed as well, let's update this, and so on. Git has to be told to commit those changes, and, uh, I mean, every single time you commit, you have to add the files back again. And apparently, even if you've added the files before, because I did this so that I wouldn't forget about it, apparently you have to go and add it again, because it's just sort of too stupid, I guess, to be like, hey, you, you, you definitely want to commit those changes, because there's more recent changes. So you have, I have to go through and get add every single file that gets changed every single time instead of just adding any new files that are created. But there's another little nuisance here that I didn't have to experience with Fossil either. If we go into... Oh, I'm typing in the wrong window. Uh, if we go into tests and then build the tests... This is a bit slow because some of the packages, especially the arrays and matrices packages, uh, have quite a lot in them. This will be better when I get my actual um, project manager in place because then it'll only need to be the changes that need to be built and to, to just to work better. Uh, so we're not actually going to run these. We're just going to go back and get status. Now it lists every single one of those files that was generated when we went to build the tests. Fossil wouldn't do this. It would just go, hey, everything that's uh, everything that you added to the list in the repository, yep, they're all good. It doesn't scan for new files and uh, complain about them. It expects you to add them if they're actually part of the repository. Because there is an understanding that the directory of the repository often contains a working directory of sorts. That's often the test uh, folder, but you can have other things like uh, uh, many things that I've seen uh, will have a folder where all the objects, uh, that is the uh, the compiler output objects, uh, will be placed, and another folder where all the uh, I mean the libraries or executables uh, that are built from those objects after they are, they're linked, uh, where those will be placed, and those are very obviously not part of the repository, but they're part of a working directory which will be located within the repository, just not part of the repository. Fossil gets this. Git doesn't seem to get, pun intended, how development actually works most of the time. So literally every single time I want to do a commit, I have to go back into tests, clean it out, 
and it doesn't complain about them again. But then that means the next time I want to run some tests, I have to rebuild literally everything until I actually have like fully functioning shared libraries installed. Instead of just rebuilding the changes. And a lot of the time, because it's very good practice, you actually want to build inside of a uh, a ch root that is its own little isolated environment where you're not actually using the system libraries because the system libraries can be you can introduce some unexpected things so you build inside your own little isolated environment this helps you know i isolate problems. You're not dealing with issues that might be present in your source code and the system libraries. You're just dealing with the isolated environment, a completely new, fresh build. And uh, so you have to rebuild those every single time with get. But you can actually leave them behind in your local repository with Fossil because it won't complain about them. It leaves it up to you to add things to the repository or not. And, you know, like I said before, is actually smart enough to keep track of those changes once you've added the file. You don't have to add it every single time you make changes. You added it before but didn't commit it and then change it again. You don't have to re-add the thing. It just goes, hey, this is still on the list. You're good. So, and I'm leaving my stuff on Git, but it's it's overwhelmingly for just other developers. Like, I, I, I really don't like Git. I don't understand how it's such a popular distributed system. Because, or, uh, really, how it's such a popular any type of version control system because it, it's just it's a huge pain in the ass really the, the amount of steps it takes to do anything in git is way longer than in almost any other version control system and one of the defenses i'll hear about that is oh it's because it's a distributed control system but the steps taken in git are longer than any distributed control system i've seen whether it's fossil or mercurial or bazaar or any of them git takes far more effort. Um, as one other minor nuisance that I've been having is pushing anything to GitHub on this uh, is a two-step operation. Not including having to re-add everything every single fucking time. So, um, I guess we're really talking about more than two steps, but to Assuming, yeah, you know, assuming it, it will not count the amount of files I need to add back in every single time. It's still a two-step operation. We gotta go. We'll, we'll get this out of the way first, just so I can show this. So, get commit. Fossil can be set up so that right after that, it'll also push to the repository. That's called an auto sync configuration. You can disable that so you can do these as two separate steps. But Fossil out of the box can be set up. Sorry. Fossil can be set up to do either. And out of the box, it does auto sync, where anytime you commit, it automatically pushes to the repository where you originally checked out from. So it's just a one nice step operation. It feels like a centralized control system in that there's less steps but it is still distributed. 
And like I said, you can you can disable that so that you can commit and then push later as a separate operation. What we have to do then is push. And of course, heavens forbid, you actually save this information in a secured manner. No, no, we've got to enter it every single time. Because that's efficient. The thing is, is it, it, you want your developers, even if it's just you, you want to continuously publish very small changes. And something like this, where you have to put in a password every single time you want to push, instead of securely storing it, means that you're either going to get one of two things. The password is going to be insecure so that it's easy to type in. That's bad for reasons that I shouldn't even have to explain. And the other is that you're not going to get these small incremental changes. You're going to get these large changes without any ability to, uh, to go to any intermediate stage. Just to save them from having to put in the password every single time to make these little commits. This is, uh, you know, may maybe it's just that Git is targeting a very different audience than me. But I think this is complete and utter crap, and I do not understand the design philosophies behind this at all. Like I said, I will keep using it. But it's literally just for other people's sake. I, I think this is fucking trash. <laughs>